There was a controversy yesterday on Twitter because the founder of a digital therapy or peer support app admitted that they had used ChatGPT to coach some of the peer supporters on how to respond to real patients in distress. Many people responded that this was unethical or maybe even un illegal because the patients hadn't consented to interacting with the chatbot. They thought they were interacting with a real person. And the main finding that the founder of this company was reporting was that it worked well until the patients found out that they were talking in part to a chatbot. They disclosed this to the patients at some point, and then the patients didn't find it helpful anymore because something about dealing with a machine made the empathy seem less effective. Now, before I comment, I just want to give my background. I have a PhD in communication. I teach health communication. I'm a consultant and I've coached thousands of doctors and nurses on how to have difficult conversations with patients. And in those consulting uh, engagements, I found that many, many, many doctors and many, many, many nurses are not very good at empathy. In fact, we took a standard situation that we use in our training, which asks a healthcare professional to respond to a family of a patient who's just had a bad, a bad outcome in surgery. And the chatbot, ChatGPT, produced a much better empathic response than the majority of the real healthcare professionals that I've evaluated in the past. So my first observation is it doesn't surprise me at all that something like ChatGPT is effective if you give it to peer supporters because ChatGPT produces more effective empathy than lots of human beings can. Lots of human beings just aren't that good at empathy. And there's some other issues around consent and the use of uh, an ethics review board. If this was research uh, destined for publication, then in America, you're compelled to use what's called an institutional review board, which is an ethics review board. This company didn't do it, and that probably violates some rules or maybe even some laws, although that's not completely clear to me. And so the ethics of doing this without consent and without informing the patients is, are questionable. The reason it didn't work as well when they disclosed they were talking to ChatGPT is probably because people want human connection. Brene Brown makes a big point that it's not what you say, it's connecting with people in a vulnerable way that seems to produce the healing effect of empathy. But in defense of the company, and in response to a lot of the holier-than-thou people on Twitter criticizing them, there are many, many, many things that are routinely done in medical care that don't have a lot of research to back them up. A lot of drug therapy combinations of drugs don't have any evidence to back them up. A lot of surgical interventions don't have any published, peer-reviewed, uh, randomized controlled trials to back them up. A lot of technical interventions, including imaging and clinical decision support by computer, don't have any evidence to back them up. And so it's not that unusual to do non-evidence-based interventions. Interventions. They should have used an ethics review board, but the use of ChatGPT for empathy assistance is going to be part of the future.